Hi guys. All right, first thing I want you to do is to stop and go to SharePoint and download a copy of these notes. They are literally labeled E versus H. Oh, sorry about that. Um, and so go to SharePoint, stop it now, go to SharePoint, print them out. That way you don't have to copy all of it down. Um, and then you can kind of pick up with this. All right, so assuming you now have a copy of the notes, what I'm gonna do is to run through a couple of things. Some of this is review, so it looks worse than it is. Um, but I want to remind you back again of this delta E is equal to Q plus W that we talked about on the first day. And we talked about on the first day that for a bomb calorimeter, that's constant volume, work is zero. And so we came up with this, and, and really, so we can you know do this, therefore delta E is equal to Q at constant volume. And we did the same thing. We talked about a coffee cup calorimeter, that constant pressure we have work, and so delta H is, is equal to Q sub P. So these are, are some things that we already know. This is review. Um, kind of continuing along here, you know, we have these two equations, Q sub P is um, delta H, because we saw that from up here. But you know, this really comes up with the fact that delta E and delta H differ by this idea of work. And, and what we need to do is to start calculating that. All right, so what I want you to envision here, and we've, we've talked about this again, this is sort of review, but imagine if we have a cup in which this reaction is taking place. And I think it's easiest to think about it, you know, I have this idea, a clear, colorless, massless, infinitely expandable cover. Um, if you imagine that that exists, if here the number of moles of gas increases, then it's going to be pushing out. And again, this is a review, that means the system is doing work on the surroundings, so work is negative. If on the flip side, if the number of moles of gas decreases, then it's basically air pressure is going to be pushing down on it, and so work will be positive because the surroundings are pushing down on the system. So that's all review. What we want to look at now is this idea that we already came up with, that work is equal to negative delta P sub, or sorry, negative delta PV. Um, since we know, of course, PV equals nRT, we're going to go ahead and replace that, and we're going to have work is equal to negative the change in the number of moles of gas. It needs to be gas because that's what the gas law is talking about, times RT, not just negative moles, or not number of moles of solid or liquid. So in its simplest form here, if we take a look at this question, if a reaction involves an increase in one mole of gas at 25 degrees, then if we compute the work, that's equal to negative the change in the number of moles of gas. So we increased it by one mole. We're going to use R because we want an energy R, so joules per mole Kelvin as compared to liters atmospheres. And our temperature needs to be in Kelvin because this unit is in Kelvin. I've already changed it to kilojoules. Your answer would have been in joules here. So there, there is an amount of work being done in this particular case. So let's take a look at this question now here. What is delta E for the following reaction? Now the reaction that I've given you here is already balanced. And we're going to say it's at 25 degrees. And that's helpful because we can use that heat of formation table. So if we want to do that, we need to find a couple things. First, we need to find delta H, which I have done for you. I used Hess's law short. That's the sum of the heats of formation of the products minus reactants. Where did that information come from? It came from the heat of formation table. It literally took carbon dioxide plus two times liquid water minus methane in order to find that. So that's one thing we need to find. Another thing we need to find is work. But in order to find work, we need to have the change in the number of moles of gas. So that's what this calculation is here number of moles of gas final minus number of moles of gas initial. So for this particular one, if we look at final up here, we ended up with one mole of carbon dioxide gas. Water is a liquid, so that doesn't count. So we have one mole of gas final minus what we started with initially. 
and initially we have one mole of methane gas and two moles of oxygen gas, so minus three moles. So our change in the number of moles of gas is minus two moles. So when we plug that in here, then that's negative times our change in the moles of gas is negative two moles times 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin times our temperature, which is 25 degrees. We change it into Kelvin, 298 Kelvin, and that's equal to a positive 4,960 joules or 4.96 kilojoules. So what that means is, is that the surroundings, because it's a positive number, the surroundings are doing 4.96 kilojoules of work on my reaction, and that's because it's a positive. The surroundings are doing work on the system. Now, if we want to try to find delta E, which is ultimately what I asked you to find, we need, we had to find delta H, and we had to find work. So that's going to be equal to the negative 890.3 kilojoules from delta H plus 4.96 um, kilojoules of work, which, I don't know, i got to plug that into my calculator here, so negative 890.3 plus 4.96 gives me negative 885.3 kilojoules is my answer. So if you're asked to find delta E, we need to find delta H, but we also need to find work in order to do that. And if I were to, to say that in words, what does this mean? Having come up with these numbers, I would say that the reaction evolves, evolves is a word that means gives off, 890.3 um, kilojoules of heat and has 4.96 kilojoules of work done on it. That's what that kind of really means by coming up with these values of, you know, the 890.3 and the work itself. Okay, these are just some others for you to try. Um, and I'm just going to give you the answers for these, but I would recommend perhaps trying to figure this out. Um, finding out what is delta H, what is work, what is delta E. If I'm going to do delta H, I'm going to use Hess's law short. So I need a heat of formation table. Work, negative delta N of gas times RT, and then delta E is delta H plus work. Um, so for each one of these, for example, this one, you get 57.2 kilojoules. The work factor, the change in the moles of gas, we had two moles of gas to start, one mole to end, uh, so the number of moles of, the change in the number of moles of gas is one. So you can go ahead and compute that, and when I did that, I get negative two and a half kilojoules. So when you add these together, delta H plus work, you end up with um, 54.7 kilojoules, if my math is right. I should probably check it, um, and that is correct. Okay, so that's what we're looking at. Um, if you go ahead and try this one, I got 176 kilojoules, and for this one I get negative 5 kilojoules. We have one mole of gas, one mole of gas, so there's two moles of gas here, and zero moles of gas for number two, so our, our change in the number of moles of gas for this one is two moles. Um, and then when you add it together, 171 kilojoules. The only one I really want to comment on is this one because you'll notice there's no aqueous sodium hydroxide in the heat of formation table. So we have to understand that this breaks up into two sodium ions, AQ, and two hydroxide ions, AQ, and those are in the table, the heat of formation table. So I would suggest that you try to go ahead and calculate those on your own, perhaps pause it for a moment. Then I will tell you exactly kind of what you should have gotten here. So for delta H, I got negative 368.6 kilojoules. Change in the number of moles of gas. 
There was one mole of gas of hydrogen to start with, and there are none here, so the change in the number of moles of gas is just a one mole change. So when I get to that, I got negative 2.48 kilojoules, and then when I added those together, I get negative 371.1 kilojoules. So that kind of wraps it up, and have a great rest of your night.